Well, uh, thank you for staying with us. Time now for us to dig into the newspapers this morning and tell you what exactly uh, they're saying. And I'll be doing this together with my colleague, uh, Gifty Ando Apia. But let me start with my stack of papers and then we shall usher in uh, Gifty. I'll start with the Daily Graphic uh, newspaper where, in fact, the headlines uh, talk about meeting conditions for unitization. And that's according to Springfield. You know, in yesterday's, uh, I believe, the Daily Graphic or the Ghanaian Times newspaper, there was talk about how they would not be an impediment uh, with that unitization. So that story is on page 20 of the Daily Graphic newspaper. There's also massive support greets 2021 census. Uh, citizens profess a readiness. You can find that story on page 16 of the paper. Also on page 16, cannabis production applications flood narcotics commission and uh, that is also uh, there there's a lot of talk about the medicinal use of narcotics or cannabis in uh, the country but uh, others also want it to be extended like other countries have done then there's a national security strategy uh, launched focuses on constitutional uh, democracy tolerance and rule of Law. There was a lot of talk about it yesterday, and when I get into that story, I'll share with you a bit of what uh, Professor Enning, who's with uh, the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, also had to say about uh, that. When you go into uh, the paper, there's also Mali military leader sworn in as interim president. I'm talking about Asimi Goita, who's been sworn into office as the new interim president despite facing a diplomatic backlash over his second power grab in nine months. You would recall that uh, Mali has faced some san sanctions from ECOWAS by way of uh, being expelled uh, thus far. So uh, a lot more talk about that in there. When you turn to another uh, page with international news, page nine, it talks about Biden calling on nations to boost their economies. And that's actually on page nine of the paper. The center spread of the Daily Graphic talks about the unitization bit I spoke of earlier. But then there's this one. Pay attention to food safety. Minister urges the public. That's also in there. Should time suffice, we'll bring you details of that. On the back page of the paper, illegal fishing activities. Stakeholders want government action. And that's uh, the call there, as the EU uh, has been endorsing regulated fishing practices by appropriate classes of levels. Details when I dig into that paper. Do we have Gifty yet? Hello, Gifty. Benjamin, I'm here. Good morning. Great. Good to hear from you. I hope you're well this morning. I'm blessed. How are you? I'm also very well. So let's quickly, before I continue with my stack of papers, let's check out what papers you have and the headlines in them, and then I'll come back to those I have here in the studio. Okay. I have the Daily Dispatch um, a newspaper. Mm -hmm. I also have the BNFT. Mm -hmm. I have the Ghanaian Times, and then I have the... Daily Guide newspaper. These are the four that I have, Benjamin. Okay, so Do let's you want me to go through the yes, headlines. Yes, let's take a quick look through them. Okay, so the Daily Guide is reporting the banner headline: Opuni claims against Judge Aruz. That's uh, the Attorney General saying that. The story is on page three of the newspaper. And then there is: Despite economic challenges, opportunities abound. That story is uh, attributed to Ken Ufuriata, the Finance Minister. And then you have Nana unveils national security strategy and wicked son kills mom, buries her secretly. That's the front page of the uh, Daily Guide newspaper. Let's take a look at the uh, Ghanaian Times newspaper. Ghanaian <clears throat> Times is reporting Bana headline, government plans to deal with terrorism, violent extremism as president launches national security strategy. So the national security strategy is also uh, big here for the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Also, remain focused as government takes steps to revive economy in the midst of COVID-19. And Ghana Medical Association condemns flagrant disregard for COVID-19 safety. 
protocols. So it is on page 15. That's the Ghanaian Times newspaper. I want to quickly go into the um, center spread of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. It says that, well, it gives you details of that story. Government plans to deal with terrorism and violent extremism. Also, road projects on course, according to Amapata, the sector minister, and World Food Safety Day observed in Accra. Um, also, other stories in the Ghanaian Times newspaper, 16 inmates test COVID-19 positive in Bando, and two Chinese, one Ghanaian arrested for transporting gold illegally. Police investigate murder of women. Those are some of the stories you find in the Ghanaian Times newspaper and their sports as well. But let me quickly take you to the BNFD, the Business and Financial Times is reporting. Environmental degradation cost over 11 billion US dollars annually. I think, let me just quickly find the, yes, so the cover uh, of the BNFT, huge imports still burdening towards that portfolio. Government working to revive companies' fortunes, debt reaches more than 340 million US dollars. And equities rebound in May, reach YTD high. So uh, year, that year today high? Not quite sure. And then under resourced SEC impedes Capital Markets Development Store is on page three. That's a BNFT for you. And MSMEs to be better positioned to drive economic growth. And then you've got that story about the environment degradation that's costing us $11 billion annually. That's quite alarming. Uh, in the center spread uh, of the, uh, let's see, the center spread of the Daily Dispatch. Okay, let me go to the front page before I come to the center spread of the Daily Dispatch. Big banner headline there, implement Ghana's first national security strategy. Uh, story is attributed to President Kufado. And I found him dead in his office, TB Joshua's wife. is saying that one. Um, let's see the center spread. Look at the back page of the dispatch. Uh, has the details of the president's admonition to the national security minister to implement <clears throat> our first security strategy. And then the center spread, Obeda Samoa on the Nkrumah years in Ghanaian history. Summary of findings, conclusions, and policy implications in Upper East region and household size, structure, and composition in Ghana. I don't know what the story is about. Finally, Pupuni Totibo Road Nightmare, haunting drivers and residents. So, Benjamin, these are the stories that I have in the four newspapers that I have as well. All right, so let's come back into the studio. I'll walk you through what the Finder, the Daily Dispatch uh, newspapers are saying, and then uh, we shall take it from there as we delve into the details of those newspapers that we have. The Finder this morning says government's domestic tourism uh, drive will create one million jobs. That's according to Dr. Awal, the tourism minister. And he's been uh, talking a lot lately about how we can boost tourism activities in our country and uh, get more foreign exchange for uh, the Republic. Uforiata urges youth to take advantage of government's initiative. And that um, dovetails into the story from the Daily Guide, uh, the front page of the Daily Guide. Nearly 16,000 agribusinesses fold up between May 2020 and January 2021. That's according to the statistical service and Ghana adopts new security strategy as threats to nation evolve faster and with greater intensity that's according to the president it's something that we've read from um, in most of the papers this morning also relevant in light of what has happened in our sub-region especially what is happening in Mali currently GMA disappointed over disregard for safety protocols at Sir John's funeral and first lady supports tree planting to restore lost forests. So those are uh, on the front page of the Finder newspaper. Uh, there's also this one tied to that very last headline I read. Disregard for COVID-19 protocols at Sir John's funeral worrying, and that's according to Occupy Ghana. So it's not just the GMA. Occupy Ghana has also been talking about it. The Daily Dispatch newspaper now and implement Ghana's first national security strategy. That's according to the president. And then this one. I found him dead in his office. TB Joshua's wife uh, recounting what exactly happened a few days ago as we lost uh, televangelist, philanthropist uh, TB 
Joshua. That's on page 11 of the Daily Dispatch newspaper. When you turn to the back page, it's the story about implementing the national security strategy. So uh, let's dig into the major stories as we have them, uh, Gifty. Uh, which ones are you going to be focusing on from the papers you have? Well, it's definitely going to be the national security strategy um, mm. that Ghana has just launched. Um, the, the, the sector minister took time to talk about this at his vetting. And I remember the details that he gave. I can't talk about all the details right now, but I remember it sounded to me excited. And it sounded to me as something that if we should follow uh, the way we ought to, that will have a lot of the problems we have as far as the way the national security operatives engage with the with civic, uh, with, with with the populace, uh, we'll see a lot of improvements in that. I'm unable to read the details because uh, the the way that I see the papers here are a bit it's a bit blurred. Uh, but Benjamin, I don't know if you can read for me perhaps the first or paragraph or something. But we know that this happened yesterday. It also coincided with the uh, launch of our new ministry or the offices for the um, uh, ministry. And it's for me exciting. If only we can stick to what the strategy says and um, exactly what we and, 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 you know, focus on exactly what we want to achieve with this with this strategy. Benjamin, can you are you able to read for me the first Second, first or second paragraph, is that possible? So, so the story is in a number of newspapers. Are you, would you like me to focus on uh, the bid from the Ghanaian Times newspaper? I believe that will be uh, okay. Because I feel it addresses uh, a lot of these, including the bit about uh, terrorism, extremism, and all of that. So yep. uh, the details yep. on page 17 of the paper, it says uh, President Naradu Dankwe Kufuadu has launched the National Security Strategy, a policy framework to guide the country's response uh, to existing and future security threats. Now, the strategy is expected to help strengthen the country's capabilities to enable it address violent extremism and terrorism and optimize the effectiveness of the security and intelligence sector by revamping the current systems and structures. It is further geared towards, and I'm quoting Mr. President here, it is further geared towards strengthening state response to current and future threats while enhancing our prevention, protection, and response capabilities. Of course, it goes on to talk about the sort of terrorist activities that we've uh, seen uh, so continuously yeah. or incessantly in so, our sub-region. So, so in a nutshell, that is what uh, the story uh, shares from the Ghanaian Times newspaper, Gifty. And always the devil is in the detail, right? It we is. need to break it down and look at the details and see how it actually addresses the problems that we have. I think one of the major problems that we've had is how operatives of the national security system have related with us in the populace. I mean, look at um, the CTFM uh, situation. Look at the killer Koda. Uh, Caleb Kuda's account of how he was uh, um, handled. Look at that San Gregor, for example. These are the latest things that have happened that, every, that has caused public uproar, right? So I believe that we have been doing all of these without a strategy, without a policy. Now that we have one as a country, how can we harden the details in that policy? And the National Security Minister at his vetting indicated that this was put together by... Um, so many people, so many stakeholders, including former national security um, coordinators and national security advisors, which are which which is people from different governments, right? So I believe that this was done in the good in 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 in, in good faith, bringing together everybody, irrespective of the political party that they 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 uh, belong to, and we've been able to put together this uh, uh, document. If we stick to the document, I believe, and work on the loopholes that we will find as we go along, I believe it will work. It will work very efficiently. Looking at what happened in Burkina Faso, we know that the threat of terrorism is. Um, it cannot be overemphasized, um, Benjamin. This is something that Burkina Faso, we share borders with Burkina Faso, by the way, in the northern part of, of the country. Mm. And so we can't say it's, we can't overemphasize it. 
what we do with this strategy will go a long way to determine whether or not we can correct ourselves, even if we find that we, we went wrong, whether or not we can deal with violent extremism, whether or not we can improve the relationship between the populace and national security operatives, and whether or not we can build the public confidence, mm. the public confidence that is required for any national security ministry to be effective. And public confidence is key. We know that pub, the, the public confidence in the police, for example, you know, has suffered, you know, has been beaten. Hopefully, this is a time for us to correct the mistakes that uh, were made uh, in, the, in the past. Mm -hmm. And I understand, uh, Benjamin, that there's a fund that has been created. I think we need clarity about what this fund is, how it is, is supposed to operate. Uh, uh, individuals, you know, anybody can just contribute to the fund. What is it? Can people demand accountability of the fund? Because we know that national security budget is usually not uh, scrutinized. So what really is this fund for? Who can contribute to it? How important or how dangerous will it be opening up our secu national security to anybody's funding? Mm. I don't know if I'm making the point clear for you enough. But yeah, these are some of the things that we should um, consider as far as I'm concerned. But for me, it's exciting. It's exciting that we can go to the ministry and say, this is a building for the National Security Ministry. So if anything happens, we know where to go to. Uh, I hope that we can apply the details in the strategy as well. Well, well very germane points you're making. And that last point that you make there is what my focus is. Because I suppose if there were a ranking in the, in the entirety of the world in respect of some of the countries with the best policy frameworks, the best... Uh, you know, statutes and all of that, I believe Ghana would be very high up in there. But when it comes to implementation, actualizing the things we put in our law books, uh, we have as in our statutes and all of that, that is where, like you were saying, the devil is in the detail. The implementation usually is the problem. So for some of us, we wait to see. Yesterday, as we engaged uh, Professor Enning, uh, I heard things about how this actually wouldn't be the first time we have something of the sort going back to the Nkrumah uh, administration but of its nature as it is obviously it would be a novelty we're just waiting to see how it will pan out in terms of real effect you also spoke about the bit about ordinary citizens and how you know the relations have been between national security and ordinary citizens we wait to see we wait to see uh, really how definitely, things will definitely. Uh, pan and out I think that the group world has been you know the background or the the, uh, the the state has been set for a certain level of goodwill for the national security ministry because people then get the feeling that okay this is a ministry that's actually working to deal with some of the concerns that have come up so let's give it the benefit of the doubt and let's see how it actually corrects the mistakes that we have endured suffered uh, over, the, over the the period so gifty i'd like to pick your brains on this matter but before i cite some other countries let me just read from uh, page 16. The story is actually on pages 16 and 20 of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Cannabis production applications flood Narcotics Commission. And according to the story, the Narcotics Control Commission has reminded all that the use of cannabis is illegal and a criminal offense in the country in spite of Ghana having joined a few other countries to allow for the cultivation of the substance, also known as wheat, for purely medicinal purposes. The commission has, however, received applications from many groups, companies and individuals for licenses to cultivate cannabis for industrial or medicinal purposes. And so now it's a real test. You know that in countries like South Africa, Georgia, Canada, even Jamaica, Jamaica allows it for uh, some medicinal purposes, some religious purposes as well. But there is this push. And you can even go as far back as what... Uh, uh, former Secretary General of the United Nations, may so rest in peace, Kofi Annan, uh, said about, well, some of these things, you can legalize them and, of course, get revenue from them by way of taxes. What's your take on this, Gifty? Well, I'll probably stand in the middle of the pros and cons. There have been... You can't, uh, you can't stand on the wall here. You can't be Humpty <laughs> Dumpty and stand on the wall or sit on the wall. There, there have been arguments, Benjamin, there have been arguments for and against those who made the argument for have talked about the economic impacts that we can actually derive from the, uh, not the use, but mm. from allowing um, sort of an industrial level of production when it comes to the use of cannabis, you know, for medicinal purposes, mm. um, etc. 
there have also been the concern by those who are against it that do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the necessary um, uh, uh, the mechanisms? Do we have the mechanisms in place? Are, are we ready to go the, the, the way that Canada has gone? Are we ready to go the way that uh, some parts of Netherlands have gone? Mm. Do we have the rehab centers, for example? Because once you open up the floodgates, then there is always a way that people can abuse the system. Okay. okay. So that's why you're having an overflow of applications. So people, you have to apply. So our laws, they didn't say go out, go out there and, we, and smoke weed. That's not what it said. But it, it's allowing for a certain level of usage, especially for medicinal purposes, etc. Mm -hmm. So people are applying. But we know that people can abuse systems. We do that a lot in this country. So the, uh, the thing is, are we ready for the abuse? Are we ready for the um, excesses? Are we ready for the things that will come up as a result of this But But, but Gifty, in, in those uh, countries where they have legalized them, you mentioned the Netherlands, you mentioned South Africa, among other countries, um, have we seen these excesses? I, I believe it's akin to the issue we've been talking about in recent times about allowing people with certain hairstyles to get into our senior high schools. Doesn't necessarily mean that once you do that, you've opened the floodgates, there's going to be a proliferation of this or that. It, it, is that really the case? I believe that uh, the, the, the two don't compare uh, 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 to, to, at the same level. Mm. The two scenarios that you're creating do not compare at the same level. I mean, mm. you're talking about hairstyles, etc. But you're talking about... But, but the same, the same argument has been raised, basically, that once you open the floodgates, well, I mean, that cuts across. Not necessarily, but you talk about hair, somebody's hairstyle. That's something that we have to deal with. Mm. But then you're talking about something that has to do with people's health, mm. something that can be very addictive, mm. something that can be very tempting, mm. right? And you're talking about... S something uh, that is also, also medicinal is for some people. <laughs> it is medicinal, but we also know that there are parts of it that can be dangerous to the health of people, especially mm. young people. Mm. Uh, and if you... Mm. If, uh, the, 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 all that I'm trying to say is that in these countries, in these countries that we're, talk, we're talking about, these are wealthier countries. If you mm. compare their economies to us, if you compare how they take care of their citizens to us, they have certain structures that makes it easy for them to deal with some of these excesses. The excesses are there, trust mm. me. The, drug, the use of drug, the abuse of drug, and the excesses it has had on these countries, they are there. If you want to scrutinize it very carefully, it will come out clearly to you. I believe that I stand with the people who have argued that we are not ready. We don't have the systems in Ghana that allows for us to, you know, gamble, mm. for lack of a better expression, with this um, policy. Experiment. Or to gamble with the use of cannabis or the use of weed. So it's, uh, it's up to us now because we've already passed the law. The applications are coming in. What can we do at this point to, you know, do the chicken and egg, balance it out, get the economic uh, uh, benefits, but also protect our citizens from abusing it, which we know is you know, highly possible. Okay, so let's do um, two related stories from the Daily Guide newspaper, which uh, you have, and it's on page six. Both of them tie into the conversation about safety on our roads. The first one is actually by Daniel Bampo, and he says, MTTD clear Accra Kumasi speed bumps. Now, the MTTD of the Ghana Police Service, in conjunction with the maintenance unit, uh, the Ghana uh, Highway Authority has started removing all the speed bumps on the Accra Kumasi Highway, which is causing unnecessary gridlocks and inconvenience to travelers. They will replace them with rumble strips, but the situation, uh, residents in the towns where the bumps are, uh, pre prevalent are complaining about speeding and the unjustifiable killing of pedestrians. Uh, the situation compelled the Director General of the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, COP Frederick Eduenim, to visit the affected areas. And they are being called on uh, to facilitate the process to do more. But tied to that, Gifty, showboating cabbie injures <clears throat> two children. And that is on the same page of the paper, also tying into the conversation about road safety. And, and this one is totally needless because it was an unnecessary display and tooting of horns by some taxi drivers in Takwa as part of preparations towards the burial of their colleague, 
uh, deceased taxi driver ended in tragedy. Two school children, aged five and seven, who were on their way to school, were hit by one of the displaying vehicles, injuring them severely. And this happened on Friday, June the 4th, at about 7 a.m. in Takwa. I'm linking this to the fact that we've heard the news, we've got the reports in recent times about how within, what, the first, it's not even six months yet, we've lost so many lives in this country. There have been so many accidents, and the situation is dire indeed. Your take, Gifty. I, I, I don't know why we spend so much time and resources talking about speed bumps and dealing with speed bumps. I, I know that there are instances where speed bumps can be such a nuisance. Um, but for me, really, tackling accidents on our roads, as far as I'm concerned, maybe I'm ignorant, but it has nothing to do with, uh, uh, with speed bumps. Mm. I think that we have bigger problems and we should major on the major and stop majoring on the minor. But, 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 but Gifty, minor, Gifty, right before minor, you go on, there are in those areas, like has been cited in the Daily uh, Guide newspaper on page six, there are some areas where people speed unnecessarily. And sometimes you have, you know, school children and all of that getting affected. Don't you think it's only relevant that we have speed bumps, sleeping watchmen on those roads to ensure that at, at least the cars are forced to stop? Of course, the other side of that would be that for those who are not aware those speed ramps or bumps are there, sometimes they uh, facilitate accidents themselves. Yes. And that's, and that's, that's, um, that's so common. Mm. That's so common. So the point is that I think that to major, when I say major on the major, it's about the necessary punitive actions that ought to come to people who are found culpable of breaking our traffic rules and people who are found culpable of causing accidents and killing people. Mm -hmm. That way it becomes a deterrent. Although people still behave where, however they want to behave, whether or not these things are being done. But the more you do it, the more... You see, it's about... Um, it, it's... I, I, I don't know, but you... You create speed ramps in a place where you believe that uh, people are speeding. But I tell you, uh, Benjamin, that there have been times where people speed anyway, irrespective right. of having the. If you travel on the Adenta. Uh, a bit of a glitch there with uh, Gifty's uh, feed. We'll see whether we can uh, reconnect with her and wrap quickly. But uh, this is something I'd wanted to take Gifty's thoughts on, and it's also on page eight, the entertainment page of the Daily Guide, right before we do my joy on line.com. Take a cue from TB Joshua's death. Now, what cue? Let me, let me read the details for you. Media personality Ekia Mwakwa, popularly known as Ekia GMB, says people who brag about their acquired uh, properties should learn a lesson from Prophet Chibi Joshua's death. Uh, Gifty, welcome back. Do wrap on your point and let's get into something I believe you're going to be interested in. Okay, so the point I was trying to make is that... Let's, let's quickly proceed. It's, it's unfortunate I couldn't pick your brains on this, but... The late founder of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, uh, she indicated as of 2011, had a net worth of 10 to 15 million US dollars, but he wasn't going to be buried with any of his property. Uh, that, she added, should be a big lesson to those who boast about owning this or that. I don't know whether, I mean, he was that uh, a braggart, so to speak, in terms of what he had acquired. Uh, what I do know is that he had attained quite a lot. He was one of those renowned televangelists, and he also contributed his bit as a philanthropist. But in there is also a lesson uh, that really uh, the wealth we gain here, vanity upon vanity, like uh, the Bible will tell us. It's not something we can fall on on any day. Let's quickly check out myjoyonline.com. And we have uh, that story there, and everybody is talking about it, from the GMA to Occupy Ghana. Minority demands apology from Ekufuado for flouting the Imposition of Restrictions Act at Sir John's funeral. And mind you, all the prominent personalities, uh, even His Excellency the President, the Vice President, were there. There's also this one. Appointments Committee uh, freezes approval of a Japan Mercer as Deputy Energy Minister. And you know why. We've been giving you details of that. Uh, fix the country campaigners to petition IGP over breach of COVID-19 protocols at Sir John's 
uh, funeral. So that's another body joining the fray. Only Almighty can lessen our heartbreak. That's according to T.B. Joshua's uh, wife. Our condolences to them and the entire church. Uh, we are not living in a democracy. Hashtag fix the country convener reacts to the flouting of COVID-19 protocols at Sir John's funeral. And then uh, still staying on that funeral, uh, investigate and deal with the uh, organizers, GMA demands of the police. Wrapping up with these stories, two injured property destroyed as fire ravages Elmina fishing market. Uh, and then more on TB Joshua. Six times TB Joshua sparked controversy. The final story I'll take uh, there, Sir John's funeral. Do you have the right to implement same law uh, you are breaking? Occupy Ghana asks government. You can check out more stories on myjoyonline.com. Many more stories there. But coming up next, we have sports, which is uh, coming your way. Do stay for that.